Chapter 1.1111 I'mo Neave It Still being written by Ben in the blackest of inks. This way, said Miguel, we wound our way past some old wooden fences that were all broken, and then along past a sickly hedge that hardly had any leaves on it. Finally, we were near the front of the school, and Miguel put up his hand. Shh, he whispered, steam pouring from his mouth. It was so cold and getting really dark. In front of us were two big gates. They were part of the long fence that surrounded the place. The fence was about seven feet high with huge spikes on the top of every second post. The gates had spikes as well and written into the twisted iron were the words mud fog, school for orphaned boys. The whole place was muddy and foul. There were slabs of ice from time to time, but mostly just dirty brown slush. We kept slipping and nearly falling over. To make things even more creepy, a dank, sullen fog began to swirl around our feet. It was as if the earth itself was so unhappy that it was sending up a great mass of steaming misery. We can't go in, whispered Six. We're girls. Jax stood tall and breathed in deeply. Give me a moment, she said. Do you know what the uniforms look like? Jax was staring at Magal. I've blocked it from my mind. Magal looked very unhappy. Someone will come outside eventually, said Jax, and then I'll use the physics of enchantment to replicate school uniforms for all of us. I nodded, but I felt anxious. Poor Blizzard, I said. I'd hate to live here. Poor me too, muttered Magal. Worst place ever. The school buildings looked more evil than anything I could have imagined. Cold grey stone with brown mortar and nasty staring gargoyles perched on the corner of every building. I could have sworn that one of them moved around as it stared at me. It gave me the creeps. Better hide, said Magal. This place isn't keen on visitors. Jax led us behind a few scraggly trees. We all crouched down. Where's Invictus? asked Minnow. We looked around. He was with us when we met Panda, said Frank. I saw him give her a hug. Oh, where's he gone? asked Jax with a groan. Oh, said Solo. This mud smells like something else. Shh, whispered Jax. A door opened and a woman shouted, get outside you lazy brat. A small boy fell over as he was pushed out the door. He sat in the mud with his head down. After wiping some tears from his face, he stayed on the ground looking miserable. He was in a dull grey uniform and he was wearing shorts even though it was freezing. On his feet were black shoes, and his jumper and blazer were black with a single brown stripe near the cuffs and on the edges of the neckline. Jax whispered, Now I know the uniform. Let's get dressed. She waved her hands over each of us, and before we could do another thing, we were all wearing mud fog uniforms. With another wave of her hands, each one of us had short hair, cut up above our collars and quite high above our ears. And then she gave us coats, scarves and gloves. And finally, beanies for good measure. Black and brown, school colours, of course. Frank looked like he wanted to burst into laughter as he eyed Sky and Minnow. But Minnow punched him on the arm and then put her finger across her lips. No, she hissed. Shh. The boy heard her and turned around. After looking about to make sure he wasn't being watched, he ran over to the fence. Who are you? he asked. We all stared at him. We've been locked out, said Jax in a stern voice. She sounded just like Escher or Solo. You know the rules, said the boy. Well, we're going to have to break them, said Jax. Now let us in. The boy looked terrified. You'll have to come to the side gate, he said. They'll kill me if I open the big ones. The boy moved behind a near-dead hedge. 
We all followed him, trying to avoid the bog holes. The ground looked like it wanted to swallow us up. Finally, we reached an old gate that looked like something out of a horror movie. The boy whispered, one at a time and be careful. One by one, we pushed the gate open just enough to squeeze in. Finally, we were all inside the school grounds. Who are you? asked the boy. Never mind, said Jax. Who are you? I'm O, said the boy. I'm O Neavit. How old are you? snapped Jax. Seven, said Imo, looking frightened. Well, Imo, said Jax, please tell me what clothes prefects wear at Mudfog. A gown, said Imo, and a red wizard's hat. In a flash, Jax dressed herself in a black gown with a red hat. That'll make sure I have some status among these mean beasts, she said. You can't wear beanies, said Imo. Everyone needs a wizard hat, but not a red one. What colour? asked Jack, sounding cross, but I knew she was just in a hurry. Imo looked as if he was going to faint. B black, he said, um, with a brown stripe around the bottom. Sorry, said Magal, I should have said. It was just that my beanie is so warm. Jax rolled her eyes. Never mind, she said, waving her hands to give each one of us a black wizard's hat with a brown stripe. Now, Imo, in a moment you're going to forget that any of this happened. I don't like doing this to you, but today, I'm sorry, I need to. The boy's face looked frightened. I felt sorry for him. He'd already been banished into the cold, and now Jax was going to erase his memory of helping us. But it was definitely for his own good. Jax waved her hands up and down to clean the mud from Imo's clothes, and then she waved them over Imo's head. There was a flash of gold dust. Imo blinked his eyes and stared at us. At least he didn't seem frightened any more. Quick, he said. They'll be serving food, and if we don't hurry, we'll miss out. Imo took off.